Hello everyone, it's Sandra and welcome to today's video. Today I wanted to talk about all the exciting new spring makeup launches. We are in full swing. We have been in full swing in the middle of all these exciting spring makeup launches. And I want to talk about what's been on my radar, which products I ended up talking myself out of, what I'm kind of shopping my stash for, and the stuff that I did end up trying out and letting you know my thoughts. Let's start with foundation. This is the category that usually tempts me the most, but I feel like this year it's been quiet in terms of foundation launches, especially compared to last year. Last year, I feel like there were so many new foundations coming. I think the brands decided to hit us with lip products this spring. I was really, really tempted by the Prada foundation that came out in January in the United States. It was online only at Sephora and I think this month, pretty sure, this month it will be in stores at Sephora. I could be wrong, but I was kind of waiting to be able to see this foundation in person. I wasn't too sure about the shade matching. I wanted to wait to be able to check it out in person. And that's still a foundation that I'm really interested in, but I do have a foundation that I really love that I haven't worn in a while that kind of would do the same thing that the Prada foundation does. The Prada foundation is meant to be like a nice medium coverage foundation that looks like skin and that is weightless and wears beautifully all day. I have the classic Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation that kind of does the same thing. So instead of buying the new Prada foundation, I kind of decided to curb my appetite by shopping my stash and rediscovering an old favorite, the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. This is a beautiful foundation. My only gripe with it is that the shade is just, all the shades kind of lean a little bit too yellow. I have this in shade 1 and 14, but now I also have my e.l.f. blue color corrector, so I'm going to dot in just a little bit to help neutralize some of that yellow. I really, really love this foundation. It wears so nicely on my skin. I have combination oily skin. I never have issues with it making me more oily throughout the day. This year, they did launch a new foundation. There's the Makeup Forever Glow, HD Skin Glow Foundation. That might be a better match for those that have more dry skin. But for me, the classic HD Skin is the best, just because it has a nice satin finish. And if I ever want more glow, I can always use a really glowy primer underneath or just use highlighter on the high points of my cheeks. Glowy foundation is something that I never go out of my way to buy because you can always, you can make any foundation glowy depending on what skin prep you wear. And there are so many beautiful luminizers on the market. You know, there's the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, the Auric, Glow Lust, Kosas makes something. I think every brand. Dior just launched liquid luminizers. Chanel makes li liquid luminizers. At the drugstore, you can get the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion, I think it's called. There are so many options on the market. You can make any foundation glowy and you have that flexibility. So for me personally, seeing a complexion product marketed as dewy is not going to make me want to buy it. I did a little bit of my usual Sicily color corrector under the eyes, and I have a couple of blemishes that I'm going to cover with my trusty Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage. This is the best concealer for blemishes, especially for active blemishes. It just really, really sticks to them. If Laura Mercier ever discontinue this product, I am going to throw a tantrum. I was afraid they would. At one point, it was really hard to find. And I don't think you can get it at Sephora anymore. I think you can only get it at the Laura Mercier website. For concealer, there were three that kind of caught my eye as they were launching. There is the new Fenty concealer that again claims to be very long wearing and fresh and hydrating. A lot of my friends on Instagram and here on YouTube seem to be really, really loving that concealer. So I have it on the back of my mind. It's something that I'm still kind of curious about. Then we have the Guerlain Concealer. After my experience with the Guerlain Terracotta Latente Foundation, 
I think it's safe for me to talk myself out of this concealer. I don't love the foundation. I have the foundation, I bought it last year, and sometimes I can make it work and I can get it to look really good, but it's not my favorite foundation that I own. I would, I would use this over that one any day. So yeah, I think, I think I can talk myself out of the Guerlain Concealer. Then there's the Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Concealer. This kind of had a moment on TikTok. And like everything that has a moment on TikTok, here today, gone tomorrow, because now I don't see anybody to talk about it. But for a while, it was really, really hyped up. And I think that's my problem with beauty TikTok and why it doesn't really resonate with me as a creator and as a consumer. I just, I just find it exhausting. And honestly, ever since I stopped engaging with beauty content, most content on TikTok, actually, I have found this inner peace of mind, this inner peace just wash over me and it's been, it's been better. So mental health tip for you, limit your TikTok usage. It will do wonders for, for your brain. I do have an under eye concealer that I absolutely love and there's nothing that I don't love about it. So why would I go out and buy something new if I'm very happy with what I have? Um, the House Labs Concealer. I have this in shade 21 and this is all I've been using under my eyes. Obviously, I pair it with my corrector, my Old Faithful Sicily corrector. This just does everything I want an under eye concealer to do. It gives me really good coverage. It does increase. It wears so well under my eyes all day long. I mainly use it under my eyes, but it also works all over the face if, I, if I'm in a rush and I kind of need it to do double duty. I like to set the under eyes with the Givenchy Prisma Libra powder. Nothing new here. This is my favorite under eye setting powder and I use this in shade number three. So while I managed to successfully talk myself out of five new complexion products, there is one that got me and it's the Lisa Eldridge Skin Tint. I caved and I bought this and I will be doing a video, it's just a standalone video about this. It takes me a little bit to properly test a complexion product to kind of give you a well-rounded opinion on it. But spoiler alert, I am really, really enjoying it so far. Stay tuned for a video all about this guy soon. The base is done. Let's move on to cheeks. This is a cheek product that I had in my Sephora cart and I was very, very close to just going to do curbside pickup and buying it because it looks so beautiful. The new Patrick Ta blush, there's, there are three new shades and there's one particular shade called Not Too Much that just really speaks to me. It's that perfect no blush blush. And yeah, I was, I was this close to going out and buying it. But then I thought to myself, wait a minute, you have these colors already. Why don't you just use them? Sit with what you have for a week and then see if you still feel like you really need to go out and get the Patrick Ta. So I ended up talking myself out of it. I love these types of no blush blush shades. And I think if you don't have anything like that, I think getting the Patrick Ta is a, is a nice option because you do have a little cream section, you have a powder section. Ultimately, I talked myself out of the Patrick Ta and I decided to just stick to the no blush blushes that I already love. I have the Pat McGrath blush in the shade Flirtatious. This is one of my favorite blushes of all time and this would kind of do the same thing that the Patrick Ta does, right? It's just like a nudie, pinky, brown kind of shade. Love this shade. And then for a cream option, I have CL Kirsty, which is so beautiful. I feel like it's it's pretty much serving the same purpose, right? The other tempting blush launch for me was from House Labs. There was this really, really gorgeous, bright, peachy coral shade that just screams sunshine and summer and warmth. And again, I, I had that in my cart for curbside pickup and it was in stock when I had added it to my cart, but by the time I was moseying around the website, in the, it ended up selling out. So the universe saved me some money in that regard. Sometimes it's not the particular color that we're, we're obsessed with that we must have. Sometimes we're just craving a particular feeling. And in my case, it was just craving warmth and sunshine and a hint of brightness. So 
I have these two blushes from Surratt. Obviously, they're not like the, the coral shade from House Labs that caught my attention, but it's the same kind of kind of vibe. It just it's just a, a kick of color, especially this color here. I, I know this color, the, the pink is called Barbe et Papa. And I think the this one is called Cherubique. And then I also have this gorgeous shade from the um, Chanel cheek palette from last year. This is beautiful. So just kind of mixing and matching and layering what I already have. And to just kind of give me that feeling that I was after, it managed to be enough for me. Now I don't, um, I don't really feel the need to go out and get that house lapse color anymore. But if you are in the market for a bright, beautiful blush for the hot months ahead, definitely check out the, the House Labs blushes. They look gorgeous. And if I hadn't had stuff in my collection that kind of got me what I was looking for, I would probably be buying one of those. The next blush launch that had my attention is from CL. And you already know that CL has quickly become one of my favorite new makeup brands. I have the one blush in the shade Kirsty that is one of my most used blushes. I love it so much. And they launched two new shades for the end of winter, beginning of spring. And this is the, the shade that initially drew my attention. This is what I had put in my Sephora cart. This is in the shade January. And it's just a very beautiful, soft, pink. They call it a cool toned pink, but on my skin, it looks quite, quite neutral, but it's beautiful. So while this is the one that caught my eye and I had it in my Sephora cart waiting for the next Sephora sale, the brand actually ended up reaching out and sent me both shades, which I'm so happy about because the other shade, June, ended up being my favorite of the two. And this is the shade that I think is actually really, really special. Obviously the pink is gorgeous, the pink is beautiful, but if you are a pink blush lover, chances are you already have something in your collection that kind of accomplishes the same purpose that this does. But this color is truly, truly special. And I was very intimidated at first looking at it in, in, the, in the bottle and then swatching it, but it shears out so beautifully and it is the perfect bronzer shade. It is a blush and bronzer hybrid. So when I put this on my cheeks, it ends up looking like my skin just spent time in the sun. So I just like to take it on the back of my hand first and then work it into the brush and then tap it on my cheeks. And you can see it just shears out really, really nicely. And there is that gorgeous rosy undertone. It's a rosy brown. I don't feel the need to use any bronzer when I use this shade. I'm going to layer a little bit of the January shade on top just to kind of show you that they're really pretty layered. And you can see the nice kick of pink that you get from the January shade. It's a really buildable formula. I know some people said that this formula doesn't last on them, so. Your mileage may vary, but for me, this wears really, really beautifully. So I definitely overdid the blush, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to build. These two colors, January and June, look really, really great together, and I think the names are perfect for them. I think that if you have Makeup by Mario Perfect Pink, you don't really need January by CL. January by CL is a touch more muted, but Honestly, on my cheeks, they look very, very similar. Obviously, the Makeup by Mario formula is more dewy. You can see how it glistens on, on the back of my hand. Again, they would kind of fit the same purpose in a makeup look. I do find June more special. I don't really have anything like it in, in my makeup collection. It is the perfect bronzer for me. That rosy undertone, that rosy brown really makes it special. The one blush that I had that I was using in a similar way was Fox by Merit, but Fox by Merit is a lot warmer by comparison. You can see, you can see it here. This almost has like a terracotta running through it, whereas June by CL is, doesn't have that orangey warmth. 
When it comes to eyeshadow, the one tempting eyeshadow launch was the Makeup by Mario All Matte Cool Toned Eyeshadow Palette, but I'm going to see if I can go the entire year without buying a new eyeshadow palette because I barely get to use and enjoy what I already have. So actually a little kind of challenge that I've been doing so far this year that I've really been enjoying is at the beginning of every month, I've been taking out a new eyeshadow palette or eyeshadow quad that I own and I try to use that or incorporate it into my makeup look every single time I do my makeup for that entire month. I just kind of spend one month focusing on one single eyeshadow palette or eyeshadow quad and it's been so much fun. I've been rediscovering old favorites. There's so much joy to be found <laughs> in enjoying what you already have as well and I'm a big fan of just shopping your stash. Do I need a cool toned matte eyeshadow palette? No, I'm not a makeup artist. I use like two, three eyeshadows max in an eyeshadow look anyway. Large format eyeshadow palettes just don't really appeal to me at that much as a consumer because I already have the colors that I that I love that I tend to gravitate towards. Obviously, I have my Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette that I absolutely love. This isn't as cool toned as the new palette, but I love these tones. These tones look really good on, on my skin tone, so why not just enjoy what I have? And then if I want something a bit more cool toned, I have the Lisa Eldridge Vega. These two colors were originally in the Vega palette and I ended up swapping them out because I never reached for them. And these two colors are also present in the new Makeup by Mario palette. There's a black, there's this really beautiful stormy blue. I very rarely reach for those. Um, instead, I, I need a little bit of warmth, right? So I ended up buying these two shades and swapping them into my Lisa Eldridge palette, but if I'm in the mood for something more cool toned, I have these old shadows that I can that I can reach for. So I'm good. And yeah, it's just at the end of the day, I'm not a makeup artist. I even when I do have the time and I want to do a more elaborate look, I'm not going to do it with all mattes. I'm going to want a shimmer in there and I love seeing what's new. I I get such such enjoyment from consuming beauty content, but it's a nice reminder that we can enjoy and consume beauty content and it doesn't mean you have to go out and buy that, that particular item. We can use that as inspiration to get reacquainted with what we already have, you know? And also the older I get, the more secure I feel in my own style and obviously it's fun to try new things and to experiment but I think as, as we get older, we do refine our taste a bit and we, we just kind of know what works for us and we know what colors and what textures work for us best. Nothing new. I'm still loving my Judy Doll Iron Mascara. I'm just in a phase where I, I like a, a bright bare eyelid. I obviously I love a smoky eye, but I haven't been haven't been doing them in, for a while. I've just been in a rut, but I haven't really been mad about it. I just I'm loving the look of just a clean, bright eyelid. I'm sure that will change. You know, I go through phases, but right now I haven't really been into intense eyeshadow looks. I like I like a soft, bright eyelid. So keeping keeping it really simple with the eyeshadow. For lips, like I said in the beginning of the video, it's been a really busy time in terms of lip, lip product launches. Everybody's launching lip glosses, lip oils, and also matte lipsticks are, are also having a comeback. We had the Summer Fridays lip oils that everybody seems to love, the House Labs lip glazes. These intrigue me, but I don't, I'm not particularly drawn to any of the shades, but I am curious about that formula. So I think once I use up uh, one of my open lip oils or lip glosses, I might give the House Labs a try. Then we had the Tom Ford Slim lipsticks. 
Those looked so good and I almost bought one until I realized how little product you get. And it just feels like daylight robbery from Tom Ford. So it's a no for me. And then we have the Westman Atelier lipsticks, which I caved and I bought one. And I'm a little bit underwhelmed by this. The, the marketing materials and the, the shade curation, the packaging, everything is gorgeous. And it just, it just lured me, right? This is a $50 lipstick. It's a luxury lipstick. Um, they are refillable. As of right now, you cannot buy the refills yet, but hopefully in the future, you'll be able to buy refills for it. I like the packaging. It's very much in line with the rest of the Westman Atelier brand. It's slightly smaller than the, the blushes or the contour stick packaging. And it just feels really nice in the hand. It's magnetic. You get this fun mirror at the end. I bought the shade Lacquer, which is a really gorgeous, pale, milky, peachy coral. I love these types of shades. This shade actually reminds me of one of my old favorite discontinued lipsticks. Um, it was a Tom Ford matte lipstick called First Time. So if you liked Tom Ford, Tom Ford First Time, if you liked... Um, the Victoria Beckham lip gloss in the shade Picante, this kind of does the same thing. It's that, it's it's a pale, peachy, milky nude. This is the type of lipstick color that I like to layer as part of a lip combination. It just adds a gorgeous dimension to the lips. But this formula, this lipstick formula is, is, is underwhelming. It's, I can't say it's the best luxury matte lipstick formula that I've ever tried. I need to have my lips very well hydrated and I need to apply this on top of lip balm for best results because if I just slap this on my lips, it can gather into lip lines. I do have a lot of, you know, vertical lip lines on my lips. My lips are also kind of chronically dehydrated. So it tends to emphasize dryness and it can feel, can feel a bit dry as the day goes on if I don't prep my lips with lip balm beforehand, but if I put a light layer of lip balm underneath and then I apply this, again, as part of a lip combination, it, it lasts and it wears really beautifully. But would I buy another one of these? No. I personally prefer the Merit lip, matte lipstick formula more. Because the Merit formula has silicones in it, it kind of glides over the lips and it looks more flattering because it blurs the lip lines, right? It doesn't kind of, it doesn't settle and catch. It just blurs and I find this formula more comfortable. I don't need to prep my lips with lip balm before this. Whereas I need to <laughs> prep my lips with lip balm before this. And then also in terms of a luxury, super, super luxury matte lipstick formula, the liquid matte lipstick from Byredo is fantastic, super pigmented. I don't need to prep my lips with lip balm and it doesn't dry out my lips at all. It's so, so comfortable. So this just feels way more luxurious. And this formula impressed me a lot more than the Westman Atelier. And they used to cost the same because I remember I paid $50 for this. I paid $50 for this. But then when I checked the other day, this is $55 now, which is really annoying. <laughs> Why? Why? Why Why is everything so expensive now? I'm going to apply a little bit of lip liner. This is the Dior lip liner in the shade 300. So I sculpted my lips with the lip liner and then I'm taking the Westman Atelier lipstick. This is very, very pigmented. It's it's a very thin, very creamy pigmented formula. One swipe, you get opaque pigment. And with, the, with these types of pale shades, you need, you need a lip liner, you need a contrast, unless you're very fair. I'm gonna do a little bit of gloss. Just to hydrate bit of a disappointment. I don't, obviously I don't regret getting it. I, I love the color. I'm able to get it to work for me, but as it stands, as a, as a $50 luxury lip product, this 
underwhelmed me a bit. This was way more impressive. And this is the final look. Love the way it turned out. It's a really beautiful, fresh spring look. We got to revisit some old favorites. We did a little bit of anti-hauling and a little roundup of some exciting new spring makeup launches. So I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what makeup is on your radar in the comment section below. I really appreciate you hanging out with me today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.